This week's What Women Binge, we have a very special guest in the studio with us. This is Kevin Griffin. Yay! So good to be here. Finally. For, I know. After I'm all so those excited. years of lobbying, you guys. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> and you're a local. I'm a local. I live in uh, downtown Franklin, Tennessee. You're in Nashville. In the historic Villain. footprint. Oh, really? That's what it's called. And you have to affect your voice. The historic footprint. Which Which means you can't paint your fence without permission. But you you can can do things with his voice. Oh, it's a a vigilant crew of uh, people. The alderman and the city manager will come knocking on your door. It's not an HOA, though, right? It's like the actual city. It's worse than that. It's darker. (laughs) You can't get out of it. You can't vote people. It's for life. Nice. Nice. Yes, so Franklin, Tennessee. Awesome. Yeah. And you've lived here for a while. Since 2011. So you got about 12 years, right? It's the longest. Longest I've lived in one place. So you must like it. I dig it. Yeah. I've gotten to see the renaissance of Nashville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, you really is, have. Yeah. From that. Gone from not place to hot place. Yes. Not place. <laughs> but I just, I, I was I just telling, coined that, by the way. I love that. Not place to hot place. You can take it. I'm going to use it. It's for your... Um, we, well, we've coined Nash villain. You're a Nash villain. A Nash villain. I said Nash villain. Oh, villain. Well, when I moved here, I didn't right. know what to call it. Yeah, we just thought Nash villain sounds funny, especially since there's the Batman building. I just feel like it fits. It's on brand. Nash villain feels yeah. good. Nash villain. We haven't said it in a while, but what if, if, am, I, am I a Franklinite? You're. Oh, yeah. I guess a you're a Franklinian. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I'm a, not sure. I'm a David Franklinian. I don't know. At any rate, we are <laughs> We're here. <laughs> We're in Nashville. Wait, I want to talk real quick about your yes. book. Yes. So this book just came out this year. The Greatest Song, Spark Creativity, Ignite Your Career, and Transform Your Life. Breaking publishing records everywhere. I I love this, though. It, I was listening to it. You do, first of all, fantastic voices. Not surprising since Thank you, you have a trained voice. I had so much fun doing the voices from the book. Um, and I, I produced it with the, the guy who produced it with me is the guy who did the Prince Harry book. Oh, Spare. oh, really? Which, this one I love is that. obsessed with. Yeah. He's got a good voice, Prince Harry. He really Damn does. Him. It's very soothing. I mean, and I think the royals have to. It's part of the I know, I know. Or they don't um, let him talk otherwise. But while they throw I was, him in a basement. I know, right? Just yeah. throw, And they did that. There's a, there's really, a few that yeah, they threw in the basement? Another, yeah, there's a dark history. But when I was doing it, you know, I, I decided to do an audiobook and just got in the studio with this really great producer. He did Prince Harry. And then as we got to the first character... I realized I had to make a choice. Am I just going to read it in my voice or am I going to do voices? voices. And he said, do characters. You did a female voice. You did a British. I did several female voices. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a British. So Daniel Smith Daniels. Daniel Smith Daniels. I do British Also known as Sir Kid. He is from Barbados. Oh. (laughs) And then then there's Shane Sawyer. And he talks like, I I just thought of Sam Elliott. Wait, wait, wait. Did you do it while you were reading? Did you switch back and forth? Or did you do sections of like this? No, I did it. There was one time where I was a uh, a hot pop producer named Brit Kanuka. Um, and I was in there with Dare. I'm not going to do the female voice. I'll just, I'll <laughs> oh, come on. The point I was about to say is when I was doing these voices, I would be doing them and I would simultaneously laugh because I imagined all my friends screwing with me once they heard it. And they did. Where am of I course. looking? And they did. And then I would lean over to Mark. I was like, am I going to be canceled for any of the voices? Is there any of these voices I'm just cluelessly offensive? And he said, no, it's great. Oh, so there was a lot of times where I just laughed and I did it um, and had so much fun doing it. Um, maybe there'll be more. That's great. Oh, so wait. So, so explain. So this is it's an interesting concept, yes. right? So you're giving kind of not self-help, but like you're giving advice, but you're doing it through a fiction. Yeah. Form. So so it's, it's called a business parable. It, going back, uh, I'll kind of tell you the genesis of it. You know, they say that that uh, nothing good ever happens in a bar after 2 a.m., <laughs> Uh, specifically, especially rather in a bar in New Orleans Mardi during Mardi Gras. I remember this. Yes, yes. yes. This is zero. But this one time, uh, I had ridden in the Hermes Parade, which is the big. It's the oldest parade. By the way, when you said that, is it like is it like Hermes like the brand like the British brand or Hermes. are we talking about no Hermes, Hermes. Is, is the Roman god or is it maybe a Greek? Oh, god. okay, okay. Hermes. Just, there's Bacchus. When you said that, I was like, I hadn't heard that. There's Endymion. So the Hermes Parade is the oldest uh, still running crew. Crews are what they call the groups that throw the parades. It's spelled K-R-E-W-E, and they're private groups, and you you pay way too much money to be part of this group to throw beads and plush toys once (laughs) a year. So I had done that uh, about seven years ago, and I went uptown to a place called F&M Patio Bar. If you haven't gone, we'll do a sidebar, and I'll give Kevin's tips 
on eating in New Orleans yeah, yeah, later. Yeah, That'll yeah. be a little something you guys can do. Besides the beignets. But, it, yeah. Oh my God. I, I have some of my favorites. Um, but I ran into this guy and he was in town with a, a business group and they had had Malcolm Gladwell, you know, tipping point and all that uh, revisionist history mm -hmm. speak for them. And, and I was like, that sounds amazing. And he was like, you should speak sometime. And my answer to everything is, is yes. And then I figure out how I'm going to do it. Yeah. yeah. That's um, the same with me. You know, I've been doing all this singing stuff. I'm like, stuff. yes. I don't sing. You sing. Singing is like my, and for some reason, all of a sudden I'm yeah. like singing and now I'm doing stand up comedy. Yeah. So I get like, so but that's know. great. Like you have to take fear. I always like to call myself fearless. And like, if something scares me or I feel like I don't know it, I'm like, I'll figure it out. I talk about that in the book as well. I'll figure it out. It's called leaving your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, so long story short, three months later, I had to do this speech and it was a speech of a, entrepreneurs, men and women who had, who I think have some type of, they get vetted, but they have to be very successful. And I realized these people aren't slouches. Mm -hmm. I got to talk about something. And I, and then, so I kind of would shed it. And I realized there were, there were these, these things, these practices that I've done over a 30 year career doing music that have helped me reinvent myself, stay creative, stay inspired, uh, curious. And so I did this speech and it went awesome. It was the most <laughs> nerve wracking thing. But I've afterwards, ever done. were you like, oh, good job? Oh my God, it. yeah. I can't you know, believe I survived. Well, I'm, I, I've played in front of hundreds of thousands of people yeah. with a guitar and singing. I can, it, it doesn't bother me. But take away the guitar and, and speak, it's a whole other animal. The opposite for me. See, it's <laughs> That's right? The opposite for me. I hate, like, do not ask me to sing or definitely not well, it's play leaving, a guitar. It's that would leaving be your ridiculous. comfort zone. But so a couple of years ago, right before the pandemic, uh, my agent said, you know, if you had a book, you would get a lot more speaking gigs. And look, I was an English major at Louisiana State University. I wrote, I finished a novel at the end of the, in 99, and I was editing it in 2000, 2001. And then I went out on tour. It, it was good. But during that time, The Hangover came out. Oh. And it was a much better version oh. of my book. So I got so bummed out. Well, now, uh, now's the time to finish it. I know, right? Um, so long story short, I started working on this. I, I was like, I need to do a book. And I don't know why I'm doing this. Because I that's, need, I that's to, how you write I need to do a book. <laughs> um, that was an old school typewriter and the, motion. The, get the white out. Yeah. Right? Um, I went to, I was in a fraternity with the, with a guy whose mom invented white out. No way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so wait, like really invented? Really or like invented, invented holds the patent. I mean, why? that's wow. so brilliant. He's a very wealthy I'm person. I'm sure. Yes. That's awesome. And, uh, so... Yeah, I uh, I started working on this book, and so I was like, "What kind of book do I do?" And have you, have you ever heard of the book "Who Moved My Cheese"? Oh or yeah, or Rich Dad Why, Poor yeah. Dad. Yeah, are those they're, they're f are Tuesdays with Maury? Yeah. yeah, they're famous business parables. So what they do is they tell they use a fictional story to tell real principles, and the biggest I never selling realized point. That's what yeah. Okay, sorry. I've actually never heard that term before, and I yeah, am the biggest parable. parable. I read I like all the that. time. I've oh, never I heard know. it referred Look, to. Look, I did a deep dive. So. What what motivated me is Who Moved My Cheese has sold 14.1 million copies. And from cover to cover, it was 52 pages. Oh, wow. And then I read it and I was like, the writing's pretty bad. <laughs> it's really short. I can do this. <laughs> and that's, that's that was it. So yeah, I started like it. like sold. And, you know, and I was like, okay, people love the music industry and they're interested in, you know, behind the music. So I was like, okay, I'm going to create this story and talk about these things I speak about that, that what I found is that the same things I do in music business are the same things you do if you're a baker, a plumber, a housewife, or a lawyer, or an entrepreneur. It's all the same things. And, it's, and if you're doing certain things right in your career and you bring that over into your, your personal life, it's all, all the same things. How to conduct yourself, be accountable, you know, and listening and, yeah. and oh, collaborate. That's a hard one for me. Um, so I put it into this, this book. I worked over it, thank God for the worldwide pandemic. And it uh, came out in Silver April. Silver linings. And it was uh, That's awesome. number one on Amazon and Barnes & Noble so for wait, I see here two you, and a half months. And you got Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. giving you a, a blurb. Uh, how did you get Peyton? Well, I mean, are you guys buddies? Peyton just uh, loved the book. Are you a buddy? Peyton and I go way back. That's awesome. So when you write a book, you all those friends, you know, That's celebrities, call them you up. sock them away. You know who I got on mine? Uh, who? I wrote an autobiography. Whatever you call it. Not, I guess it's Memoir. Out. Memoir. Memoir. Um, I Which Bill, is, what is it? Bill biography Murray. is when you... Someone are, writes about you. Right. And then autobiography, autobiography you write about you yourself. yourself. Yes. But I think and, mine was more maybe memoir because it was more storytelling yes. as opposed yes. to like memoir. the, the Instead timeline of, facts. of things. Yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, I got Bill Murray. It was, I oh called him God. up and I was like, listen, will you do me a favor? And you know what he did? He goes... 
And he goes, oh, all right, get a pen. And I was like, okay. And he goes, write down. I don't know if Melissa can write. I don't know if you can read, but I know we've both done worse things than try to read her book. <laughs> and God, I was like, done. And it's Bill on that's my Brilliant. book. So Did you put it on good. the front? Uh, no, we put it all on the back. You put it on the back. No, it's just my picture um, on the front. But <laughs> like, that's bold because you want to do anything to grab. Um, I, I have a lot of really great friends who I, I, I sent little excerpts to, and Peyton. Peyton back in the day, he went to Newman in uh, Uptown New Orleans, and he would come. I'm a few years older than Peyton. He and Eli would come to our shows at Tipitina's. And the, once, pause. I don't think we've actually told anybody what band you're in. We we have not actually talked <laughs> about sorry. your your. Uh, Long, illustrious, illustrious career. Coldplay. <laughs> You're here with Chris Martin. <laughs> no, it's R.E.M. No. <laughs> R.E.M. Then I am a much younger Michael Stipe. <laughs> yes, much. No, you. Um, you I got hair now. Are one of, in one of my most favorite bands, better than Ezra. Yeah. Better than Ezra. But you've also done so much more than that. So yes. I feel like. You've got the the bio, right? I know, I've got it right here, but like... Yeah, but, so Better Than Ezra... better need to know. Yeah, Better Than Ezra was, uh, is my band. I started in 1988. I was a freshman mm. at LSU, and it, we started this silly Roll band. Tide. Oh, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. reflex for her. I just, Ignore it that. It just happens. Roll Tide. It, it <laughs> is like an autonomic reflex. Roll That's Tide. A, the times I've been in New Orleans are mainly for Alabama games. <laughs> So, were you always an Alabama fan? No, I married. Yeah, I'm from okay. New York. We don't know football don't at care. all. Were you from the city? Uh, technically, yeah. Or from Long Island when I was really right. little, and then the city. And so, you know, the nearest stadium is Jersey. I grew up with seven sisters and one brother. So, so and my dad's not a sports guy. So, not really into the sports. So then I married a guy fan. from Alabama, and you mm -hmm. know, it's like you're. It, literally, he asked me one of the first questions he ever asked me was what do you do on a Saturday in the fall? And I was like, uh, is it your birthday? I'm with you. And Apple he's like, picking? <laughs> no, you watch college you football. Watch college and football. I was like, I, and I went, oh my God, do you like football? And he goes, oh, this could be a problem. <laughs> I respect the record and the tradition of Alabama, but I'm an LSU guy. I get it. You know, I and, and look, we had Nick Saban for many years. Oh, that's we, right. we, won, we won two champions. So do you guys hate him as much as no, you would think? I or mean, do you look, respect he, the... He left LSU to go to Miami. Dolphins. Yeah, and coach that. And then he would realize that coaching pro was, was nothing like was no college. Fun. So I don't hold that against... He likes to against... people, and I think he does he a likes, good job yeah, at that. He's, he's really, really good. Yeah. Um, you know, I like the team, the fans, because I've been I've been at the uh, on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Yeah. After an Alabama LSU game. Yeah. And it's not at pretty. Alabama or at Louisiana? at Alabama, but back when they used to play at Legion Field. In oh, yeah, yeah. So my husband said the only time his car was ever vandalized was at LSU. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and you know what, what I told my kids, Mark. Mark, we can settle this. That's what happened. You and me, let's do a punt, pass, and kick competition. <laughs> do you remember that? The punt, pass, and kick? Oh, they still have yeah. That? I do remember. They still have yeah. it. Like, it was co-ed. Let's do it. I'll do it. We'll do we, it. I think that's what we do at our, our my son's football. The moms get to do that kind of thing. Yeah, like, you kind of play it. the positions. Do but they play, does your son play tackle or flag now? I have two kids in tackle. Well, one just quit the football team, and then the freshman is on the football team now, and then I have a... Fourth grader who's flag. Okay. So a little bit of everything. But the one who quit is a pilot. So that's, He's, I mean, it's yeah. still really cool. Yeah, he flies. Planes. Right, it's not really slacking. But he also no. wants, I think he'd rather do music now. So. Yeah. He'll, uh, I coach my son's flag football teams. All three of my boys. I have three boys. Oh, me too. And, yeah. Oh, three boy uh, parents. That's like a, that's a special bond. Because do you have crazy. A, you, you do have a daughter. Nope. No daughters. Mm -hmm. so, you know, what oh, do you, you do have a daughter? No, I don't. So we Just have three boys. We, nothing but boys. Three boys. I love it. The problem is the boys grow up and c become close with the wife's parents and we get left in the dust. Oh, you think? That's what the usual trajectory is. And My I'm kids are just, concerned. They, they praise their father so much, but they have this also kind of tumultuous mm -hmm. relationship with him. And I'm kind of, I feel like the punching bag right now. Like teenage boys, I feel like a little bit like I get the brunt. I also don't feed them. I'm not the cook in the house. You're not the cook. So because I'm not feeding them, I don't. <laughs> I am the cook. You are. So they so adore they to, you. They're beholden to me. You, they, yes. Their stomachs are all yours. Like, they're all mine. For they're me, just, it's They're like, just like a dog. I have a three-year-old, 96-pound <laughs> golden retriever. If you are the source of food, you have all power. All the power. I have Boys no power. My husband just opened a gym here in Brentwood, and I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm having to whip together some meals, which I don't do well. Yeah. So I'm like, quick, spaghetti and meatballs, hurry. God bless spaghetti. Like, I make the best spaghetti ever. 
I got I got to get back to it, but I don't want to eat it is the problem. I'm trying not to mm-hmm. eat these things. I'm mm-hmm. trying to lose some weight. And then these kids have to eat all this food and all the things they want are like quesadillas, chicken or nuggets, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets and mac and cheese burgers. and yeah, so burgers many burgers, and pizza and tacos. Yes, and, guys, everything's yeah, branded so nice. Branded, right. Do you like it? Thanks. Yes. Speaking, wait, wait. Speaking so of chicken good. nuggets, we were talking about Peyton Manning. Oh, Peyton, Peyton Manning. Manning. Wait, why is that reminding me of chicken I just nuggets? Like that was where we were going to go with that. <laughs> I mean, that was the greatest segue of all time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Tis the season, Amanda, for new looks, new style, holiday style. And there's no merrier way to do it than with Pear's new holiday collection of glasses. That's right. It's time to switch up your look and snap on the top frames for every event and occasion. So I just got my new base frames and I got the clear this time. So I'm so excited because last time I got the light pink because, you know, it's summertime. Now it's winter. I'm going with the clear base frame and then I'm snapping on some different holiday designs which I'm so excited about I cannot wait to see we just got through our fall and now it's time for Christmas cheer go. all Let over the holiday eyeballs spirit shine with seasonal <laughs> styles that slay pun intended <laughs> <laughs> this jolly assortment features snowy scenes classic plaids which I think is my favorite yuletide activities and your favorite festive hues Pear has a frame to fit every face with five new wider base frame styles. And their growing lineup of frames has options for the whole family, men, women, and kids. And kids. With virtual trying, you can find the right frame shape for you from the comfort of your home. And super easy. And Pear's quality frames, they're built for everyday durability and versatility. So they're the only glasses that you'll ever need. And you save on traditional glasses markups with base frames that start from just $60 and top frames are just $25. And you get free standard shipping on all orders with a flexible 30-day return policy. You know what I love, too, is you can get blue light blockers. You can get the kind that I just got the kind that shade when you go in the sun. So, like, Ooh. you know, so they go to like Transition. sunglass mode. Yeah, it's super cool. That's awesome. So go to com slash binge, B-I-N-G-E, for 15% off your first pair of pair. That's right. Pair, P-A-I-R, eyewear.com slash binge. Thank you, Pair, for sponsoring What Women Binge. Um, I was just texting with him. Um, texting that we just called him Chicken Nugget. <laughs> it was just, a compliment. He's probably a fan. Uh, his commercials Meaty are... Meaty and breaded. And yeah. he's, he's probably the best host ever of Saturday Night Live. You can tell him I said that. Like, he is the... I mean, not that he would care. The one but. where he is... Uh, Abusing the United kids Way. on <laughs> the United Way commercial. <laughs> so Here's awful. The deal. That <laughs> where he's like, I didn't tell you to come out of there. Get back in that porta potty. Peyton is one of those me. people. He's like Vince Vaughn. The, the the character you see on TV is how they are in real life. Yeah. Vince Vaughn, the, that snappy comeback, witty guy. But hold on, I've seen Vince Vaughn a lot at the Playboy Mansion. I never saw Peyton at the Playboy Mansion. You would never listen. see no. So I think you're like, I mean, so apples and oranges this is, a little this bit. Is, you can't just say the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> I'm talking about back, back, in, the back day. in the day when in the, the gr- Playboy Mansion still belonged to Playboy. In the grotto. In, uh, yeah, the grotto was gross. So Here's really the deal. The, the bathrooms seem to be a little bit busier than the I grotto. I kind of feel bad. All my peers from 90s bands went to the Playboy Mansion. You didn't? I never went. I it was something to see. I went a lot, but it, it wasn't as, I mean... It was interesting because I went for Halloween. I always went for the Midsummer Nights party when everyone's right. in their underwear and stuff. Um, but it was a, like being a girl there was a little bit like. Uh, yeah, sketch, it, sketch. It, it, well, even if you brought a date, which right. I did a lot of the time, they would run off with someone else there. Usually one of the playmates or, you know, Amazing. some half naked girl. Is this in the memoir? I think it is. A little bit of it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So but then again, you're also like with mini me hanging out, like, you know, just throwing shots of tequila down and trying to keep him from falling off the table. That's like, a classic L.A. party. There's always a mini me. <laughs> there was always. No, but it was literally mini me. I know. I know. I know. Vern. <laughs> but if it wasn't Vern Troyer, yeah. it was another mini me. Yeah. Any any time I was any time I had played a show in Los Angeles, man, it at, happens to at, me all the time. El Rey or there? or the Greek Theater, and I ended up at a party <laughs> in the Hollywood Hills. There was always a mini me, and without burned, fail, there was, was always at every party. There was always a magician there. Oh yeah, like yeah. isn't that guy David Copperfield? Yeah. And there was always one of the guys who had played in one of the Terminator and movies. Andy Dick. <laughs> Andy takes it every party in LA. And at some point around four years. I don't know how he ended up at my house like three times. I was like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Who do at, you know? At some point you go, I need to go home. But here's <laughs> but the deal. But when it's your house, how do you kick Andy Dick out? You're screwed. <laughs> but this was before Uber. Yeah. So you either you either had to stick it out yeah. or you just had to walk down Sunset some Plaza. Some big or, hill. 
way or down to try not to Laurel get killed. Laurel Canyon down Wonderland, yep. Lookout Mountain. I lived on uh, Wonder View, so it was like oh, the Wonder View Glen. Lake and the whole, mm-hmm. yeah, trying to get down well. from there, down Bone to the chilling 101. Warnings. Yeah. Bone <laughs> chilling <laughs> warnings. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Good times. Funny. Good times. I can't Good believe time. we never ran into each other. And we may have. Maybe we did. Maybe we did. On Sunset. I actually used to own the Trocadero Bar on Sunset Boulevard. What? Yeah. You know the one that's like open to the street? Yeah. Um, right across from kind of, well, now it's Pink Taco, but like kind yeah. of category corner. There was the, the place we used to party at was Dublin's. That was the Monday night spot Dublin's. to go out to Dublin's yeah, on Monday Dublin's. night. That's where you'd find all the boy bands and Limp Biscuit. Dublin's. And like oh, you were Tara just, Reed. Uh-huh. Yeah, we were all out at Dublin's, and Dublin's then we go to like Chateau. Cherry or Las Palmas. Yeah, we hit all those bars. Sometimes Key Club, not too often. Remember Key Club was, was scary. <laughs> then there was Hyde. Remember? Oh, Hyde. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is fun. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm back in the oh, 90s. LA and what? I was back in Alabama. In this one was in Alabama. Cool, cool guys. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been there. At some point in the past 10, 15 years, we were like, change of scenery would be prudent. Yeah. And we're here. Well, when we had children, probably. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I think that was about it. But, was when your kids were born is right when I moved out of L.A. When you moved out of L.A. You know, that said, I I love living in Nashville and Franklin, but I still dig L.A. You know, yeah. um, I love to go visit. I love to visit. I just didn't want to raise my kids there. Yeah. That was my yeah. thing. Like, I wanted the school bus. We were talking about school public bus. schools and stuff. So there's great I schools and school great bus. neighborhoods. You yeah. know, it just for me, it was like, I'm a Southerner. I want, see, I'm a New Yorker, but like long, but like Long Island, New York, mm-hmm. like when I was little. So it was like, like, honestly, my husband growing up in like Southern Alabama and me growing up in rural Long Island is not that different. Because it's that, that different. small town stuff. Like, everyone knows each other. Everyone knows each other's business. There's like one dance studio, one football team, one bus, you know, one like roller skating rink, one roller skating rink, one. Did you have ground round? Did you guys ever know about ground round? No? We did. Maybe that was a, round. Did you? Mm-hmm. It yeah. was like a restaurant for families. They had a huge movie monitor and a thing of popcorn. You go get your popcorn and yeah. you could sit and watch the movie until your food came. Yeah, Where was point. this? Yeah. It's like Red Robin That's food. Brilliant, line. Brilliant, it, right? it was a, and it was a big meat grinder that was. Oh, the, yeah. The ground round. Logo. I wasn't into that. It wasn't. But that'd be was, frowned upon. Oh, no, because it was. It was um, <laughs> but it, could but you I guess see it could be any meat. It, it could be impossible. Burger meat. Was, yeah, that's true. But it was uh, it was such a fun thing. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. It shut down. It became like. a. Why does the impossible meat bleed? Ooh. Someone Ooh. explain this to me. I think it. Seeps. Food coloring. <laughs> Food coloring. Forty. It's red forty. So, uh, so but but they not, would because it's part okay. of the aesthetic. You, it's supposed know, to be like meat. But, I guess. Oh, I but I can't. It's just got to be the juices. With the. I got real into the Impossible Burgers for a while. They now taste now great. I've never done it. Now I've kind of gone gone off them. Oh they, really? They're good if they're done right. They're good, but why? Yeah. Does what are they made out of? Lentils or what? I don't like, actually know. Chickpeas. But it's, all, it's all plant based. Where is what are, is the voice of God in your ear? Oh yeah, Ask brain. Him, what is impossible? What burgers? is the What's main, the main staple? Main ingredient. Main ingredient. I'll know in a minute. <laughs> Probably beans. It's always black beans. Or yeah, or pinto? No, no, too mushy. It's gonna be pinto. I don't uh, black beans. Have yeah, you black bean, it though? Black bean burgers. There are black bean black burgers. Black bean burgers. That's a good point. A do you soy. remember speaking of now? We're going to go back to LA. soy protein. Do oh, you, soy. Do you remember um, the olive where the farmer's daughter hotel was? Yes. And they had this burger. It was called the No Animal at All Burger. I, this is early nights. This, this is what launched the Impossible Burger, probably. Yes, and it was the greatest. Oh my god! I never French went fries. there. I never even went to the farmer's daughter. I wish I had, but um, so you were. Th- this was you were living there in the nineties. Yeah. I, I moved there in 96. You moved there in 96? Yeah, yeah. And I was there until to... 2008, 9, 2009. I almost moved to Nashville, but instead went to Connecticut and then came here a little later. I like it. But... Three years, 96, 99, those were good years. Those were good years. Yeah, there was a lot going on. Mm. A lot going on out there. A lot of, a lot of boy bands, a lot of... Boy Pop band. girls. That's the second time you said boy. She's really what, what, boy what, band. Like, like, like in sync. You just think about like in sync, Backstreet Boys, Britney, Christina, Pink, like a lot of degrees. pop. Right? There was a lot of pop. C-town. 98 degrees. Yeah. But see, I'm a rock girl. BTS. So I'm on your I'm on like your BTS. Like your music is my <laughs> no BTS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making <laughs> sure like, you guys were listening. I, I wanted to throw in a current K pop band. K pop. To make sure you know. There but you go. Your music, so better than Ezra. Back is to the book. One of my yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Back to the book. But your your band is one of my favorites, and um and like I feel like it's funny because my son who's seventeen right. is really into music, and luckily he likes 
like he's not just he into current taste. music. Yeah, he's not just into like mm-hmm. today's rap or you know whatever. He's he's into like '90s music. He's into any. He's into Motown. He's into Elvis and the Eagles, and he loves all this. But the shows that we go to together are like Smashing Pumpkins, Bush. Like we do some of these things together. We just went to see shine down we just went to see three days grace and chevelle um, serious just like 90s week. action yeah and, and gavin rossdale still looks so good he climbed up in the in the ryman he climbed up i don't know where he came from but he came out at the door upstairs in the balcony climbed up past us like pushing past people it's very exciting it's very exciting and he does look very good. dangerous gavin i hated it because i because i'm mad at him for what he did to gwen stefani i don't really know anything about their relationship but i'm just assuming he is an asshole and and he's so cute though. Let's and so not trying not to like things him. about people. We no, don't I know. know. I but good... I'm just assuming. I want to be on her. I'm Team Gwen. We might want him on the show one day. Okay. So I, I, I love you, Gavin. Gavin. We love you, Gavin. Oh, you do. I'm sure yeah. you know him. Uh-oh. So uh, we years ago we were playing a show called Endfest. It was one of these uh, alt rock, alt radio, alternative rock radio um, shows. It was in Portland. It's called Endfest, and it was uh, the backstage. Everybody shared one big room, and they call it pipe and drape, which they just mm-hmm. have these. Kind of like this. Yeah, this kind of stuff. They just have curtains making little cubbies for all the bands. And we were sharing one with Bush. And we were sitting in our room just hanging out. And Gavin walks in and he has an aura. Gavin Rossdale had an aura. (laughs) He was glowing. And uh, and he was smoking a joint. And um, he goes, hey, mate, you want to hit? And I was like, sure. (laughs) I I did not smoke weed. Oh, no. And so he hey, and you're about to go on stage. I, I smoked. You know what? I smoked weed in the high school. Then I just <laughs> stopped. And um, so he no, I'd already played. Oh, okay. um, and so he hands me the joint, and it had a stem uh, in it. So I got the joint. And I went oh, and I got the stem, and I just oh no, you pulled, pulled the, out, the little metal piece, and it was, and the whole joint just disintegrated. Just went. It just fell. A little burnt, burning ember on my jeans and stuff, <laughs> and I realized it was one of those old joints that had the wire. Yeah, the in wire, the, and you hold the in, wire in the paper. And I was like, uh, uh, and I looked up. And I was like, Gavin, and he just went, "No, oh, mate," and just turned to walk. I was like, Gavin, is that your only interaction with that Gavin? That was it. <laughs> that was it. Years later, I ran into. <laughs> I was like, Gavin, <laughs> sorry, I wanted uh, you to like breathe me. In, breathe out. Breathe, <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> I don't want to come back down. Machine Head! <laughs> Glycerine! <laughs> Glycerine! Uh, <laughs> By the way, I want to explain. Year, I want someone to explain those lyrics to you. Years later, I, I, actually, the Grammys, um, I was nominated for a Grammy, and I ran into him at uh, uh, the Troubadour. Okay. And we said hello, and I did not bring up the fact that, you know, we, you we remember met Remember when I ago. destroyed your joint? Yeah. <laughs> not, Wait. Probably doesn't remember. So, I want, so your music, like, yes. so Juicy... I have, I have a question about Juicy. Yes. <laughs> Is that your voice? That's me. That's you singing on Juicy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I wasn't I'll sure. I'll perform a little bit. Oh, a, a yeah, please do a little Juicy. <laughs> can so, you do that one acoustic? Juicy, juicy I can. It's can? usually frowned uh, frowned upon to do a song that's a single guitar string uh, and falsetto. <laughs> Most people shy away from that. Okay. <laughs> but not but, Kevin. Any, anytime that it, it's <laughs> advised not to do something, that's usually when I'm when you go for it wholeheartedly. Yeah, I like um, it. But yeah, so that's me. I was really listening to like Miss You Late Era, you know, mm-hmm. 70s Stones, that decadent East yeah. Village vibe. Um, the funny thing about that song, that came out in 2006 and was uh, top 10 for the band. I love um, that song. The lyrics. I actually put it on a list today for a soundtrack. When oh, I, did you? Because I was just reminding myself of some of the music and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm writing this down for like a soundtrack for a movie in the future. Like I have to use that in a movie. Has the, it been used on a soundtrack? It, oh, I'm sure. It has not been used in a soundtrack. It was used as the theme song for Desperate House. Right. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yeah. This, the lyrics, if you listen to the, the, the verse lyrics, they're complete gibberish. <laughs> and I sing, I, a lot of times when I'm writing a song, it, it's gibberish. There'll be, for me, it's all about the melody. That melody has to pull you in and the vibe and everything. Um, and then I'll have a few hallmark words that, that you know, bookend a phrase of gibberish. And so I, that's how that song was written. Really? I, I just, I built the beat and I was like, this feels like P-Funk and the Stones. Yeah. And yeah. It's really cool. And I was living in New Orleans <laughs> and I started singing, you know, in the falsetto and I finished it and, and sent it to the guys and they loved it. And then, then I had to sing it for real. So I started writing lyrics and nothing worked. So... The vocal on what you heard is the demo 
vocal. Really? And then I had to later, I had to write out the lyrics. So I had to approximate what I think I was saying. Oh, no. So it's, I think it says, you're like a salve for a leper. My lover self automates. I mean, it's just just <laughs> <Yes>! complete <laughs> gibberish. So do you think glycerine's the same way? No, I'm just kidding. Glycerine. <laughs> glycerine. <laughs> Um, wait, and where, like, I just want to know, like, yes. all these fun things that I've never been able to ask. So where's the name Better Than Ezra come from? The name has always been a secret. Oh, uh, you're not telling us? We don't tell anybody. Okay. We don't tell anybody. But you have a new band but that ends with my last years. name, with Heart, right? Do you have oh, yeah, we do. thing going on with Heart? Yeah, so, so but, but I'll tell you. We used to tell people the name. That's the only thing I've got. Don't take that from me. That is the, is the mystery. I will ask you about mystery. Yeah, but, but, better but than we'll leave it mystery. The best, the best, there's, put it this way. There's a couple of books that explain, it's band names explained. And the Rolling Stones have a paragraph. U2 has a paragraph. Better Than Ezra has like three pages of, of you know, different Them. ideas of the names. The best one is... From Hemingway's Immovable Feast, page 258, it says, anything was better than Ezra learning how to play the bassoon. Uh. And that is so cool and smart and so well-read, way more well-read than I am, <laughs> that uh, we've gone with that. So that's, that's great. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's amazing. But there's who the um, – you're doing – this other band with the three names, yeah. it's Ezra Hart. Wait, yes. Yeah, so the, I'm gonna make, you Ray. know, Ezra keeps better than Ezra keeps going, um, and uh, I also do a band with Mark McGrath and Emer from Sugar Ray and Emerson Hart from Tonic. It started off. We were we noticed that Goo Goo Dolls and Train and Earth Wind and Fire were getting all the good private shows. All the birthday parties we wanted to play, all the corporate gigs <laughs> they were getting because they because they had more current hits, and we were like, "How do we compete with those guys?" And I was like, "We combine our forces." <laughs> so I called up Mark, and I called up Emerson. I was like, "Here's an idea. Let's call our band Ezra Ray Hart. Let's play all our own hits, and then others select." 90s hits that the bands that wrote the hits are embarrassed to play. Oh, yeah. And let's go out. We, we do yeah. Tub Thumping by Chumbo Oh, no Wumba. way. Oh, oh, my God. It's the biggest <laughs> song of the night. Um, and That's it took off. Awesome. So it started off as, as a corporate thing. And now we, we're doing, you know, regular shows and it takes off. And it's a blast because I get to play all those really cool Sugar Ray yeah. songs. That if, you're, if you're a guitarist, the Sugar Ray songs are like classic acoustic guitar parts. They're super— Did you have to learn any of it or you already knew I had it? to learn it all. Oh, you did? Uh, and it's really weird. It doesn't fit normal songwriting structure. Uh, so that's really cool. I do that. And then, I, then I'm, and then most of what I do is I have this beautiful studio in Franklin— and I write songs for other people, and I've, You're I've been a writing. I'm songwriter. Yeah, I've had you know songs with Taylor Swift and and Sh and uh, Sugarland and uh, Blondie and Meat Loaf and Tiger Lily. Lily Tiger Lily Gold. I have a song on the charts right now with Tiger Lily Gold, which is a which is a drinking song, It's a country song. Okay. And we did you do a Daughtry? I have written with Daughtry. Okay, because my husband's song was um, my husband wrote. Uh, it's Wait, not over. Your, your husband's a songwriter. My husband was a songwriter. Yeah. Now he's no. a trainer. He's a trainer. He doesn't want to do music anymore. He doesn't want to do it anymore. No, but he, he's, he's, he, he'll always be a songwriter. Yeah, and his early, uh, yeah, you could dig through his files and see if there's anything there. Yeah? But he's because he's got about sixty songs sitting in a hard drive somewhere. That's he awesome. Won't, he won't let anyone listen to him. But he so instead he got his NASM certification and opened a gym. Um, <laughs> but he he was a songwriter and he got dropped by his. It reminds me a little bit of your book story, but like he got dropped by his label when he gave them his newest demo right. and they dropped him and. Uh, but then another producer took the song and gave it to Daughtry, and they found they so, yeah. So he's not Grammy nominated by accident. <laughs> he's now Grammy. He didn't, what what yeah, song? It's not over. Oh my god. Yeah. So he's. Um, That's great. That's yeah, a great he only song. found out like minutes before it came out. Really. So, so <laughs> tell me really this: strange. what kind of trainer is your husband? It, it, uh, physical. So he does like um, right now. He opened this place, BFT. We have an episode of the podcast you can listen right. to about it. Um, but it's or if you like to come work <laughs> out, come work out with us. I'm there every morning. I am so down. Come on. I did Iron Tribe for like three oh, years. Yeah. You know Iron Tribe, yeah. which is like CrossFit, and I, I've I've kind of kept my pandemic uh, routine. I do my Peloton. Uh -huh. I'm doing my first half marathon in oh, January. Wow. The, well, come try BFT with us. What does BFT stand for? So it's Body Fit Training. She's BFT good. Body, body fit. fit. Oh, back to that. 
body fit training. Um, yeah, so it's like group <laughs> fitness with uh, weight. It's like a lot more weight, right. and it's it mixes in this. There's a it's a program, so like you have to go it. through the whole program. Is it a franchise thing that he? It is yeah. a franchise from Australia, and Wrong he's idea. like number ten in the country. But That's amazing. Um, yeah, but they're opening them all the time. I wonder. I think there might be one in Louisiana. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he's, uh, he's loving it. I love it. I'm like, obsessed. maybe at some point I'll, we'll do an episode, just, just a little, little brief little episode where I come to BFT. Yes. Yeah. We'll do a little, we can do a little, yeah. a little uh, content creation, a little content yeah. YouTube I'm creation. I'm so down. Come to BFT and, and work then, out with us. And then we'll script it to where every, everything's going. Okay. Then your husband, while I'm lifting and trying to get my, my personal best, he goes, roll tide. <laughs> uh, which should make you work a little harder which you would think then right? I push and then the weight go. up I'm like tiger bait <laughs> and, and then we start rolling around and then, then someone we, jumps in with a war eagle and I know all of a right. it's like yeah. this is SEC humor yeah. for those of you guys well and like, I love when you say SEC though my husband's always like you know the SEC I'm like not everybody knows what the SEC is either Southeastern Eastern Conference, Conference a college the football the only real conference for football. all the ladies out there that might be in Australia <laughs> that know about BFT but don't know what the SEC is it's the Southeastern Conference of College Football. Getting back football. to lady content, you you wrote with Taylor Swift. Taylor mm -hmm. Swift. And yes. I happened to be in the audience one night years ago when she sang Breathless. Oh, my God. Really? Yes. Where was it? Oh, gosh. Brain, where were we? He'll tell me. <laughs> He's going to tell me. So Maybe in Louisiana? That was the coolest thing when we started getting calls and, and, and friends and family and stuff were like, oh, my God. Taylor Swift is covering Better Than Ezra. Mm -hmm. um, it started with a song called Our Last Night oh. uh, off of our Before the Robots album, which was from 2007. And then she started doing Breathless. Yeah. Um, I've, heard, I've heard her do Breathless. And people think, we. it's it's funny, the story with Breathless, when when you are when you make an album, you know, you, you have, what, 10, 11, 12 songs on the record. Without fail, the last song that you've written is... Uh, is a song that it may be the greatest song ever, but you haven't played it live. You haven't gotten that feedback. You don't know how good it is because unless you're Paul McCartney, not every song you write is the one. Yeah. A lot of times I think a song is like, this is it. Because it's like filler, right? Yeah. Like my husband would always call some well, songs filler. You never think that, but some songs, my you know. Did. Maybe that's why he's not no, doing well, it Some songs, you know, people like some songs more than others. There's some songs that I was like, this should have been a hit. Why don't yeah, people like it? Yeah. And you just move on. But Breathless was the last one written for this album. So it was the 12th, 12th song. Mm. We never played it. It was never a single. And five years went by and it was 2012. And we got a call uh, one night. I'll, I'll never forget. I was at Morton Steakhouse. Oh. We were doing a show that Yummy. night in New Orleans. And we're like, hey, uh, Taylor Swift's management have called uh, they want to perform your song on the Hope for Haiti telethon. Oh, okay. And yeah. this was right after the big uh, earthquake hit Haiti and and George Clooney and Sean Penn and other luminaries had put together uh, this telethon to raise money for uh, for relief. It At the time, it was uh, the highest watched televised live event ever. I think it oh, wow. still is. Beating, you know, all Super Bowls. Um, and full disclosure, since I know we're in the, the tree of trust. Yes. The first thing, I can I can admit this now. The first thing I thought when they said, you know, she'd like to do Breathless, Taylor Swift is covering your song. I thought, ka-ching. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Because <laughs> it's every songwriter's it's true, dream yeah. to have Taylor Swift cover do your song yeah. or, or, or Ed Sheeran. And then immediately I was like, you're going to hell. It's all going to charity. It's going to charity. You're not going to get any. But for one moment there, yeah. this odd between between the three yeah. of us, yeah. I was thinking I'm retired. That's fair. No, I won a million dollars on Wheel of Fortune, but for charity. And I was really excited about it. I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. But I was like, would I be happier if it was for me? No. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I know. <laughs> But just I'm, I'm so happy that it raised money. But yes, yeah, so so uh, Taylor put it out and and she released that album and uh, so it was very cool. Um, and then Taylor's always been super sweet. Yeah. Um, it shows and getting friends. Uh, How did into she the know shows. about? Or did someone find it for her? Do you think she was just a fan? She was. I mean, like a lot of musicians, you'll find whether it's Taylor Swift um, or Noah Khan or Elton John. First and foremost, they're massive music, music fans, fans yeah. and they 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 just consume music. And I talk about it in the book. It's one of the things called filling the well. That it's that you know, 
when you when you're continuing your career, inspiration it has to be um, it has to be with effort. You, you you can't just sit back and let it happen. Yeah, you know you it have has to be as much of a student you have to as go you out, are. Yeah, you have to go out and seek inspiration. Yeah, um, and so great artists are always looking, listening to new music. I mean, speaking about working out that, you know, on Friday with like clockwork, it's always new music Friday on Spotify mm -hmm. and listening to new songs. I'm like, what is this? Who did this? And then I'll click those three buttons out to the side of the song on Spotify. Mm -hmm. It tells me the credits and without fail, it was like, Oh wait, I, I know Shane McAnally. I know that songwriter. Wait, he's, he's writing with Ray, this great new British artist. I'll hit Shane up and they're like, Hey man, she's in town. You want to write? And I'm like, yes. So, you know, it's always about seeking well, out. It's like Sir Kid in your book, right? Sir Kid. Sir Kid is a fan. <laughs> Did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors breathing around 30,000 gallons of air daily? It's a lot of air. I didn't know that. 30,000 gallons of air. So according to the EPA, indoor air could be two to five times more polluted than outdoor air. And in some cases it can be a hundred times more polluted. Ew. Is that crazy? Ugh. Well, let me tell you something. Do you know Air Doctor? I do know Air Doctor. I know Air Doctor too. I love Air Doctor because it has helped me with this issue. I am so worried about my indoor air. And especially since COVID and all those things, I was I super concerned about indoor air. Well, so, and it's allergy season. We've got pets. We've yes, got all those things. Kids that are pollen, bringing all the dust things. mites, mold. Air Doctor filters out dangerous contaminants and allergens so your lungs don't have to. Yes, so the pollen, the pet dander, dust, mold, it's all gone with their ultra HEPA filter that's been independently tested to remove 99.99% of tested bacteria that's and viruses. Yes, and virtually 100% of particles as small as 0 0.003 microns. That's small. It's so tiny. They also feature whisper jet fans, 30% quieter than most air purifiers. And I can speak to this because our air doctor is like in our main living space Same. in our house. Yeah. And you don't even notice it's there. No. It's and awesome. it's lovely. It's I have mine behind a plant, and then it just, like, cleans the air. Oh. And I just feel like everyone's healthier because of it. Yes. And Air Doctor comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't love it, you just send it back for a refund, minus your shipping, of course. So head to airdoctorpro.com and use promo code WWB. Depending on the model, you receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. So lock in the special offer by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O. Dot com. That's airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code WWB. Thanks, Air Doctor, for sponsoring our podcast. It all comes, yeah. This so it all comes back. Speaking to me right it, now. It's all, all comes back full circle. And, you know, in, in the things I could talk about, like collaboration, filling the well, which is always seeking out inspiration and changing your attitude, which is like when there's a, the normal way you do something isn't working. Yeah. Like when I play guitar, the normal, when I write songs, the normal way is, is I sit down with the guitar, but when that's not happening and I'm at a creative deadlock, I'll like, okay, change your attitude. And Shane Sawyer teaches this to the protagonist. Shane, Shane's a pilot, and he also looks like Sam Elliott. Oh. He talks like this. <laughs> yeah. He famously says in the book, Jake, my ego is not my amigo, which I love. <laughs> that's one a of great, great line. One of, the, one of the greatest lines. But he talks about how in aviation, attitude is a dial on the, the plane. In altitude is how high you are from the from the ground, right? But um, attitude is your orientation. Mm -hmm. So he says, so in the book, Jake can't finish the song, and he says, you need to change your attitude. He can't finish the project, whatever it is at home or at work. So by changing your attitude is your angle of approach when you land it. So how do I change my angle, my attitude? Not like your coach would yeah. say, you need to change your attitude yeah. or you tell your, your kids. Change the way you're trying to do something. So in music, I'll... I'll I'll start with a lyric or I'll build a beat with whoever I'm working with, or I'll take a great song and I'll reverse engineer it. Like we did that with uh, Harry Styles as it was hmm. just taking about all the different parts of the song until we realized as it was, is take on me by aha. <laughs> and I was like, that's how they wrote a hit song. So, you know, and if you do that in anything you do, like what is the normal way I do something and it's not working? Okay, I'll change my angle of approach, yeah. change my attitude. So I talk about that, leaving your comfort zone. Yeah. And then the biggest thing is, is dare to be stupid. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I think the, the big reveal in the book is. Dare to be stupid. Dare to be stupid, which is the idea that, that the people I know who are happiest and most successful in life don't have a filter. 
They 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 don't have a filter, and um, they just throw out crazy ideas. And without fail, they're throwing those ideas out. If it's in a songwriting session, if it's in a work session or whatever, whatever it is you do, without fail, something great happens. And if you're listening, which I'll talk about, you're like, wait, what did you just say? There's a songwriter named JT Harding, and we were in the songwriting session, and it was going terrible. And then he was like throwing out lyrics, and he goes, she was a heavy metal pedal steel player. And I was like, what did you— what did you just, she was a heavy metal pedal steel player. And we used that in the Florida Georgia Line song that became a number one song. But, but yeah. in the book, you know, it talks about, there's, a, there's a, a, a famous TED talk where this guy named Sir Kenneth Robinson said, you'll never come up with anything truly groundbreaking unless you're prepared to fail. So that reminds me of like, there's some quote about um, you can't make epic memories with mediocre people. It's kind of like that, right? Yeah. Like you kind of like you're it only going to have like ex, like extraordinary nights and memories if you get with someone that's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> it, who who is always just going to throw sh shit out there, you know? And so it, it, I kind of try to live my life just by in certainly in songwriting just like by saying yes and daring to be stupid, daring to just just to put it out there. Yeah. And that's when great stuff happens. Yeah. yeah. And then that that lesson is, of course, taught by Sir Daniel Smith Daniels, who's a genius. And Where did you a, come up with the Sir Kid name, though? Like, I thought that was really cute because um, he was young. I, you know what? I was a big fan of uh, Spinal Tap. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to come up with a really ridiculous British name. Yeah. So Sir Daniel Smith Daniels was the name. And then I was just thinking, like, what what would people call this kid if he if as person if yeah. he was a if he was a genius and he was knighted at twenty six and he was a billionaire? And I was like, Sir Kid. Well, uh, kid. Walking back to that spinal tap comment. Yes. You were at Morrissey the other night, right? I was at Morrissey. We were at Morrissey as well. No way. Wait. How I missed that one. You were invited. You didn't come. Oh, I missed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my husband was. Morrissey the Smiths, great 80s band. Amazing. Uh, I saw Morrissey. I, I think he did a live back when I was working with MTV. Uh, he did one of the acoustic. I think I went to an acoustic show of his. Or oh, something. my gosh. That would be great. That would be amazing. There's it was a long. I mean, we're new, talking about 1992 or something. That would have been. That sounds about right. Yeah. Right when he went solo. Yeah. Um, he played at the Fisher Center for the Arts. Beautiful. Which, on, which is on the so Belmont gorgeous. campus. It's the craziest, finest theater it's that one that has the big the it goes around like the balconies go around. Yeah, right? it's, it's like it's, it's like a beautiful an, an, like an old believe. opera house. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's where we had. But Easter the walls there are last adjustable year. for all of the acoustics, so they can change everything depending on who's performing. I saw CC Wines play. So cool. She sang at mm -hmm. Easter there for our church service, and it I was would, they yeah. didn't do it this year, and I was so upset because it was so beautiful. Yeah, it's a great place to see music, but I was getting my I was singing. I was that guy. Yeah. That you don't you want next along. to you. I'm like, look, I apologize to the people. It's like, I'm going to be that guy. And it's I okay. never do that. Did you I'm see what happened with Adele? There was a boy in the audience, I think, in Vegas, and he was standing up and singing along with her. And I think he had special needs. Or right, something. right. But he was standing up and singing, and people were screaming at him, sit down, sit down, stop it, or something. She goes, she stopped the whole concert and was like, I'm sorry, what's going on with this young man over here? Okay, you want to sing? You're allowed to sing. You're allowed to stand up and sing. And like, I had someone once complain to me that the people in front of us, where was it? Maybe it was Smashing Pumpkin. No, somebody was like, can you believe they're si No, it was Elton John. They're standing. These people are standing in front of us. Do you want to tell them to sit down? And I was like, I said, to the there was the people right, next right, to me. Right. And I'm like, no, because he literally said, everybody get on your feet. Like, yeah. we, that's, it's a concert. That's what here. you do. That's what you do. You don't want that person standing in front of you. <laughs> you don't, let's be honest. You don't want that no. guy. I mean, I'm 6'4". Without it can be eight, it can be a Bridgestone Arena, eighteen thousand people. The biggest, hairiest dude in that arena is going to be standing in front of me. But at least, see, I'm five one, so <laughs> well, see, I'm the high school woman your standing puts in front you of the on his shoulders, shoulders yeah. right? No, yeah, I wish. With no, BFTs, he's going to have great. I know with BFT, he does have great thighs and big shoulders, but um, <laughs> yes, but I have big thighs as well. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, what is it? We we're going to see. Is it Disturbed coming up or you're oh, a rock, Tool? You're a rocker. Tool's coming up, and he just got tickets to Tool. But he was like, I didn't want the floor was super expensive, so I got us in the it's Bridgestone. Right. And he's like, I got us up in like up a few rows, and I was like, Well, thank God because that's the only way. I, if I'm standing on the floor, you can't I might think. as well be at home listening to it. On the I radio. took her to Lizzo. She was like, Well, I can't. I didn't see everything. A thing. I could see was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I see the back of other people's heads, and if anyone farts, it's like right in my face. Oh. So I'm like, <laughs> This is pointless for me. <laughs> <laughs> that it was amazing. I have the same management as Tool. Oh, really? So if you want some, if you guys want to meet yeah, him or I used something, to know just Danny let me Carey know. back in the day, but um, he used yeah. to party in my hot tub and I'd have to yell at him and kick him out of my house when I had to work in the morning. I'd be like, get out of my hot tub. 
And Vern Troyer. But I haven't seen him in a long time. And Vern Troyer and Andy, <laughs> and Andy Dick. Dick. Yeah. It's a very Andy, eclectic oh, group. Oh, oh, well, we already had uh, Tim Mahoney here, is, 311. Is, oh, really? Yeah, he's a friend of mine. So, um, and I know he's, Nick Hexham really well. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nick's so he, great. So Tim's really close with Danny. I okay. That's kind of how I know Danny, but I haven't Andy, seen him in a long is time. Is Andy... Oh, I don't is know. He, don't ask me. Anything. Is he free right now? <laughs> you want to have a party? Is Andy? No, 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 no. Is he oh. not incarcerated? Is he, right? Oh, I have no Where idea. He? he probably is. Brain is, is Andy free? Is Andy Dick in that? <laughs> yeah, was there I some scandal? I hope God bless I no, think there was so, a scandal. So the Spinal Tap moment was the at the end story. of Morrissey. The smoke off the yeah. stage comes out over the audience and it ends up setting off the smoke alarms no. in the theater. No. And nobody knows what to do. What theater is this? Oh, in the, 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 the Fisher, Fisher the Center. The Fisher Center. So it's this beautiful new th- a theater. They, they've had a like CC Winans and things like that. Yeah. They've had a lot of, uh, I went to the Porter's Call fundraiser, uh, this, this mental health thing. They haven't had a lot of full on rock shows. No. So when, on the second to last song, they went crazy. It was like the, the guy controlling the fog machine fell asleep like he was a narcoleptic <laughs> and, the the and it did not stop <laughs> and it flooded this room that has five, five and I'm sure yeah, they it have sh- sensitive it was fire it, in that building they yeah, so, so the lights alarms. went on the alarm started going off oh my god and Morrissey was a great just sport just walks off stage <laughs> he did <laughs> what to do <laughs> oh my gosh and we're all just standing like do we do we leave nobody left nobody we left. all just stood there and waited for the end but it Wait, was real quick though because yes. we have to get to these questions and then I want yes, you to question, play for us question but Pilgrimage. Yes. So That's you baby. started Pilgrimage. I started Pilgrimage Festival. Talk talk to me about that. That was daring to be stupid. Uh, so in 20... <laughs> Which was brilliant. 2013, it was the day after Thanksgiving, uh, and I might have been overserved oh. th- on Thanksgiving Day, so I thought it would be As prudent be. to take a run from my house. Um, and I always go south uh, towards Jim Warren Park, but for some reason I went through town and I found myself out at Harlandsdale Farm, which is across from the factory, which is in downtown Franklin, Tennessee. You should go. And it's just, I was catching my breath, and I've told this story so many times. I, I literally caught my breath, stood up and looked, you know, where I was. The sun came out from behind the clouds, and I was like, this is the most beautiful setting for a festival I'd ever it's seen. A it's it's a, a former Tennessee walking horse farm, uh, 238 acres rolling uh, natural amphitheaters, rolling hills. And I'm like, I'm 18 miles from downtown Nashville. I'm a mile and a half from I-65. I mean, arguably, if you read Southern Living and Garden and Gun and Rolling Stone, Franklin, Tennessee is the coolest small town in America. I'm going to do a music festival. Mm. And I was, I was, and it was one of those moments, uh, we've all had them, like you had that idea and you sit on it. And then a year later, someone else does it. Yeah. And, I, and it happened so many times. I was like, not now, not today. Screw you, Gavin <laughs> Rossdale. <laughs> and I ran home and I called my buddies. I was, you know that stupid idea of doing a festival? I found the place. And like let's and they were like, let's go. A year and a half later and 41, you know, PowerPoint decks and countless meetings with the mayor and the board of aldermen and and cucumber sandwiches and mint tea with, with <laughs> octogenarian people who held the keys, you know, to the farm. We had our first uh, festival in twenty in twenty fifteen, and we had uh, Willie Nelson and Wilco play year two. We had Beck and Hall and Oates year three. We had uh, we I, I became tight with Justin Timberlake. We had him come on as a, a, a as a headliner in year three. We've had uh, Chris Stapleton, Dave Matthews, wow. Black Keys, Foo Fighters, The Killers. This year we had the Lumineers and Zach Bryan. Go to pilgrimagefestival.com. dot com. For the and next year for is our tenth year. year anniversary. Oh my you gosh! You need to be our guest. Come I and introduce come. people. It's oh, so I would fun. love to. Why, why is this not happen? Oh, I would love to. Can I do that? Yes. I mean, because I'm not tied into the music industry. Now you know. Now somebody I know somebody music. Pilgrimage. Now I, I like somebody. it. Now I know a Franklin boy. <laughs> you got, in, <laughs> you got, got in, the keys. Got the hook up. Play your to the pilgrimage. Play your cards right. Got it. Anything can happen. I'll do it. I'll be there. Do you know about this dance to end Alzheimer's? I don't. There's um in I was just wondering because it's uh. It's uh, the Paisleys, so like Brad and um, Kimberly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kimberly's uh, mother passed away of Alzheimer's, and so right. they're having this dance. My father to end. did as well. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So they're having so this I'm big um, dance, and I was I'm supposed to tell people about it because it's uh, it's November twelfth in Nashville. Uh, party packed with dancing hits from the 2000s, incredible lineup of stars, and your ticket supports the fight to end Alzheimer's. So um, and it works with the Alzheimer's Association, and uh, this year her sister Ashley Williams is throwing the party, and so. 
Um, that sounds amazing. Fun. Is there a live band or is there a DJ? Is it just? Uh, you know what? I think in the past, like I think our friend Chris Kirkpatrick has played. It's right. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. Boy band. Um, but uh, I, I think what they do is they, I think it might be DJ too though, because it, I know that so it this ends with the dance party. But last year was the 90s. Right. Last year they did a 90s mm-hmm. thing. So yeah, it's like a whole weekend of stuff, but like that's. I'm in. So people can buy tickets. Wait, Wait tell me when this is again. I'll tell you when it is. It's November 12th. And I'm trying to, you can get your tickets at uh, alz.org backslash dance party. So if you go to alz.org backslash dance party, dance party, I know. And costume. And it's like after Halloween. So you still get in the spirit a little bit of like, let's pretend we're someone else. You can wear the same stuff. You can be Gavin Rosdale and explain the lyrics to glycerine. Breathe in, breathe out. (laughs) We did so many shows with those guys. (laughs) I love it. I, I am a fan of them too. I love oh, that. They're great. I love his stuff, even though oh, I don't so understand wait, there's, there's questions. Lyric. There's questions. These are just our questions we ask everybody yes. just to pick your brain a little bit. Right. Um, is there a standalone book that you wish had a sequel? Wow. <laughs> the greatest song? The, no, let's see. <laughs> um, the Notebook. The note, oh, did you like The Notebook? I like The Notebook. Oh, you're sensitive. Yeah, I'm That's sensitive. That's actually That's great. cute. That's actually, that would be a really good one. Uh, first, that would have werewolves. Oh, I'm in. It would have the undead. You know how I are feel they about still, werewolves. Are they still in a boat with swans? And, like, is that yeah. with? But I the werewolves so. eat the swans, or is they like evil mermaids, it gets really like dark. sirens that like eat the swans? Have you ever? You know, there's a, take a, very a friend sense. of mine, Seth Graham Smith, is a screenwriter. He did Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. he wrote Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter yeah. and stuff. <laughs> so I would. Say oh my gosh, to, do that. Take the Notebook. Notebook sirens. <laughs> yes. And so, have yes. them just and the swans. A sequel. I mean, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, that'd be Come brilliant. On, right now, Ken? Yeah, for Come sure. On. I haven't seen Barbie. <gasps> oh. I know, I know. No. It's, oh, it's so... Yeah. Mm, no. We're not really allowed to talk about it. I mean, only it. because... I know I'm, really, I'm not allowed to talk about it. You guys can. It is so good. Go ahead and talk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, I can't wait. It's, Union, so, yeah. it's funny. It's Oh, yeah, we so, can't. I can't. Okay. She can't. I get it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Are you SAG? I am SAG. Oh, okay. Well, oh, then I'm you sure can't either. you won't get in trouble. I'm supposed to not? No. Hell, I don't know. I know. Sag after. We're not exactly so promoting. Yeah. I know. Um, what was your first video game and console? I had a ColecoVision. Oh, that's which a is new one. old school. It was Pong. It had yeah. Pong. That was yeah. it. It was Pong. Pong. This was before in I television, might be which what had, I had asteroids. It was that yeah. one unit, and it had a, a, two, a little dial, and it was game changing. I think I had that too. Yeah, that might have been my first actual. Nobody remembers ColecoVision. Yeah. And my parents couldn't have, wouldn't pay for a television. <laughs> that was like I had one rich friend in the neighborhood yeah. who had a television. Oh, I think we I think people would come over and bring their Atari or something. We never had our own Atari. Um best dish you can whip up. It's, <laughs> it's spaghetti. <laughs> That's what we already talked about, your spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> and it's a pound of a uh, grass-fed beef. Okay. It's a pound of mild sausage. Oh. Then I then I make my own uh, marinara. You do? Yeah. Like you smush the tomatoes? Yeah, I all? do all that, and then I cook Garlic it. I cook it all. down. It's an old Griffin. It's an old Irish, Irish. recipe. Oh. Hey. oh, wait! I thought the Louisiana was like French, but well, you're it from is, Atlanta. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're no, like me. It, you're it, a smorgasbord of. It's of yeah. Places. I'm a go-to. Borg. Smorgasbord. But actually, Borg. you know what? It's more fun to say Borg. <laughs> you know what? Gumbo. Oh, gumbo. I'm a really good chicken. And I do a great gumbo. All right. Yeah, I, make, I don't think I've uh, ever the, actually had gumbo because it sounds scary. I don't like mixing foods. I'm like a five year old. I make you know the roux this. with the Trinity and all that kind of stuff. We have a fun thing we like to do called Here, Melissa, try this. Yeah. So next time we hang out, she if puts you make a gumbo anytime. Re- oh soon, my gosh. Let yeah. us know. Yeah, I have to try things. And then gumbo. she has I'll to try it. Gumbo. That's okay. a lot more. Don't colorful. give me foie gras. I'm not eating anything mushy like that. It smells like liver. Well, it is. It is liver. I don't like to eat cat food. Okay. Um, if you went to jail, what would your crime be? Rocking too hard? (laughs) (laughs) Rocking too hard. Talking too much. Talking too much. I was going to say, please be cooler than that. (laughs) Oh, I like it. I like it. Talking too much. (laughs) That would be me too. Hugging too long. (laughs) Hugging too long. I I just love to hug. (laughs) <laughs> what was your favorite was that, toy when you were a kid? I don't know was where that, that came from. Was that Foghorn Leghorn? You just came up with I'll another. Say, I'll, yeah, say. I'll say, I'll say. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say. I love the hug. It's not that scared down to here because I've been laughing so hard. I'm There's tears just Oh, we didn't talk about the, you know, I had a very brief, ill-fated voiceover. Uh, Did career. you? Yeah, I, I was going to be the voice of Mountain Men on the History Channel, and then they kicked, they, they, they booted me right at the last moment. Oh, man. So sad. 
And I had this voice like this. It was crazy. And, uh, you know, those voiceovers, the, I, we'll pull the curtain back. If you get a voiceover gig, oh. or like, uh, it's like it's a quarter of a million yeah. a year. Some actors that people are like, oh, whatever happened to them? They became voiceover oh, yeah. artists. <laughs> like They're laughing they're all the good. way. Yeah, yeah. and, and nobody, the and they don't get bothered in the grocery store, you know? Yes. So, yeah, they're laughing all hugging the way. Too, exactly. Hugging too hard. Hugging too hard. <laughs> hugging too hard. I like that one. I like that one. What was your favorite toy to play with as a kid? Stretch Armstrong. Oh. Oh, cool. Mine never lasted. I was always too interested in what was inside of them. Ooh. I would poke. I would eventually poke a hole. In. I would poke a hole and watch the <laughs> stretch Armstrong. I love. Uh, and can I do and the evil Knievel wind up? Oh, the that jumps. Yeah, that yeah. jumped. Oh, it was very amazing. Cool. I even had the RV with the. Uh, I got the upgrade. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, look at you. RV sold separately. Check it out. Um, what is your unpopular opinion? My unpopular opinion. Do you need an example? Oh, give me like an mine is that I hate dolphins and everybody seems to love dolphins. You're so cute, but I don't like dolphins. Um, my unpopular opinion is I didn't like Titanic. <gasps> but you like the Notebook yeah. or just the book? I didn't like Titanic. Interesting. Yeah, I know. And everybody likes Titanic. Too cheesy. Yeah, it was, it was just yeah. Yeah. It was, I think it was a Billy Zane character. Oh, really? <laughs> He's so evil. He's so evil. It's you like just ridiculous. One, he, when he shoves, when he takes the kid to get on the boat. Time. Just, uh, look, it always like he smelled something He's evil. bad. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Zane. That's true. Billy Zane. That's true. Maybe that's why he has. You know, I, it would suck me in. But but you know what? Also, um, Avatar too. I didn't like I've Avatar. Never seen too. Avatar oh because it looks so phony to me. I don't understand. I don't, I'm not going to fall in love with these Avatar like one was long necked blue people but I with the didn't big ears. Like yeah, the Titanic. Yeah, and I've kept that a secret, a dark buried oh, secret, and now I've just opened it up. I'm very sorry. Well, we're going to have to get a secret from you for our secret star for our secrets episode. So you're going to need another one. But so think of another. But uh, meanwhile, we want to know your pet peeve. Sticky floors. Oh yeah, that's Ooh, a good that's one. A, yeah. If I'm in the kitchen and I'm walking and I hear. <laughs> Oh. I'm like, who did this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if you walk into a, like a restaurant and there's something, do you turn around and walk sticky out? Sticky floors. Yeah. And all you of your what? kids are teenagers now, so they're probably always sticky. I have a pet peeve song too. I was a big Kiss fan, except for one song. Uh -oh. I was made for loving you, baby. You. Hell for me. Really? Tell this. Hell for me is a place where that song is on infinite loop and the floors are sticky. Oh, but are you going, going to kiss on? next Mine week? Mine is what's going on. Really? What's going on? <gasps> my, oh, my God. My, <laughs> like that. That, that song elicits very strong opinions. Oh. My best friend and keyboardist and guitar, so we've been friends since sophomore year in high school, Jim Payne, hates that song. <laughs> So wait, so here's the thing. So I had, so I'd moved to Connecticut. I was 32. It was my 32nd <laughs> birthday. Hate that song. Oh, and the only reason I know it is because of this moment. Like I wouldn't have really recognized oh, yeah. it except for this moment. My 32nd birthday, I'm kind of in a new town. I don't really know many people, but I've invited a few friends and my very best friend who right. I did my first show Clarissa with. And like, so she's, but she's 10 years older than me and she lives in Connecticut. She's kind of right. the reason I moved to Connecticut. All of her friends come to my birthday party because I know mm -hmm. her friends, but then I also have my new group of friends and I have a DJ. My husband like made a dance party thing and got a DJ. So we're dancing all night. And then I requested the DJ. He was like, do you have one last song you want to hear? And I, I forget what it was, but mm -hmm. I suggested, you know, the song I wanted to hear is my last song. But then all of a sudden I see my friend Michelle run up with all her f girlfriends and they go running up. And the next thing you know, I'm like hugging people goodbye because I think the party's over. And all of a sudden what's going on comes on. And I'm like, and she goes, this is our song. And her and her friends like did this on the dance floor, like arms around mm -hmm. each other, swaying back. What's going? They're like, this is how we always end a party. I was like, I can't do this. Yeah, that's PTSD. I you got need no. To see, you need I have to. I went up to the DJ. I said, I'm so sorry. I'll give you a hundred bucks. You stay another five minutes and play a different song. <laughs> but the song, it's not <laughs> called What's Going On. What's uh, it called? It's got brain. It's, it's called What's Up or Yeah, What's Up? What's up? Uh, oh God, now you're gonna make me look up. Years and a laugh is cold. Stop it. Can <laughs> he cut off that great big heel of a lie? Um or whatever that No, means. It's, I mean it says <laughs> Oh yeah, what's up? To the what's type up? Of the but look, it says side. what's up, but also say what you can also mm -hmm. write in what's going on. Yes, you can. Is that because it's a song lyric? Yeah, what's up? You know I'm gonna play that on guitar. Oh god. Oh my gosh. <sighs> what's going? Yeah. <laughs> All right, wait, three more. Three no, more. I'm going to give you one more because the other two are girly. Uh, place on your bucket list. Uh, place on my bucket list. That you haven't gone to yet. Uh, Lake Lu uh, Oh, Lake Louise? Were you going to say Lugano. Lake Louise? Uh, no, um, Lake Lugano. 
Oh, where's that? No, uh, Lake, I'm sorry. Como, Lake Como. Oh, oh Lake Italy. Como. Lake Como. I've been thinking about that a lot Lake recently. Lake Como, with, uh, my wife and I got married in Positano. Okay. At Villa we Trudile. got married in Florence. Oh. We have so much in common. A Positano. Positano is beautiful. Positano is amazing. It's one of the few places where when you go there, it it exceeds what you think it's going to be. Yeah. You know, you're, so often your imagination builds something up. And when you get there, like, oh, this is just an, an, another place. Yeah. When you go to Positano, there, there's something about if you've traveled a lot. The light, the way the sun hits things is different yeah. in different parts. Maybe it's just the angle where you are on the globe. The light in Positano is amazing. I wonder it's if it's the also, light of love. You can't, oh, is that what they oh. call it? Yeah, the light of love. I wonder if That's it's also a new album title. Can't, there you go. Next album Look, title. Just, you get a cut. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know what cut? they say in yeah. Nashville? Write a word. Do we win the room? Get a third. Well, I'll just take free tickets. Okay. <laughs> to every time you're in Nashville. Let, let us come. To the local yes. tickets. I mean, local show. Um, or I'll just drive to Atlanta because so, I'm sure so you have Lake a lot of family. Como, Lake Como is uh, a good one. I've with, never been. I can't with, live with there. my wife. And George Clooney has said, hey, Kev, I know we don't. Hey, Kev, I know we don't know each other, but I'm not going to be in town. Use my to, house? Use my house. And I get to come down with yes. you, right? <laughs> Okay. And the Chris Craft is filled with filled up. Uh, plus, you know, charcuterie with, board. We got your uh, lemonada or your. Did anybody limoncello. say charcuterie five years charcuterie, ago? Charcuterie, no. no one ever we said called them lunchables. Yeah, lunchables. Yeah. Not everybody has to have a charcuterie. No. But I do love I do some charcuterie. Oh, I love I some charcuterie. I just want to call it charcuterie, though. Okay, yes. I'm going to preface with that. I did not write these. Oh, this is this or that. Oh, thanks a lot, Amanda. <laughs> Throw me under the I'm bus. Gonna, I feel like, I'm, By the way, like a setup. Coming up with eight seasons of. I know that's it's not fair. easy. It's not easy. All right. Pineapple or pepperoni pizza? Pepperoni. Floss or toothpick? Floss. <laughs> Floss. <laughs> I have to explain that one real quick. Hold on. I know we ask everyone this this season. Everyone's like, well, my son very became personal. obsessed with toothpicks while we were in Africa this summer. And I was like, I was trying to think of something or something. And he would rather have a toothpick. And I was like, that's so odd. But I wanted to put it in. I don't know. I embrace toothpicks. I like a good toothpick. And I had a friend tell me, he said, you know, in Japan, using a toothpick, they're, they're at every restaurant and, and it's considered uh, good manners to, to pick your teeth. Your teeth. <laughs> so I just go, that's the one thing I'm embracing with the Japanese culture. Yeah, uh, and so, toothpick. but, but I think it's you. kind of frowned on using a toothpick. Well, because Nothing's it's like floss. It's like going, clean. Yeah. I know, but when that. my when my little fifteen year old uses it, it's so cute. It's I'm like, sweet. he's taking care of his teeth. I like doing it, uh, but in private after if I'm at yeah. a restaurant. By the way, if but he's using a toothpick, I know he doesn't have his Invisalign in, so that's how. There you go. Have but I'm a I'm a flosser uh, uh, every night. Yeah, my husband Flossy too. Flossy floss. I hate flossing. Nothing sexier than someone flossing. I hate flossing. Oh, <laughs> I <laughs> you know, I'm just, a very pro flosser. You wanna you know later? And then <laughs> the gums start bleeding, and you're like <laughs> crime scene in the scene. And just leave it on the. Oh, oh. nothing's or, next. The t- it misses the trash okay, can or it's like, on the floor. I have to pick my husband's up because it misses the trash can. There's something new that we need to start a movement right now. We need to band together. Uh, it, we have to stop people from using those pick little mini flossing and throwing yeah, them, throw on the them on the ground. Oh, I hate it's, it's so nasty. By the way, those get stuck in my teeth. I've had to have those cut on like set when I've had something stuck in my teeth and like yeah, a makeup artist looking at me. I have to have them cut. I'm like, oh my god, it's stuck in my teeth. It's stuck in my teeth, and I have to have them cut. That reminds me of when we had to say cut on extra when <laughs> this is about Mark McGrath's going to kill me. <laughs> we were on extra one time and one of his veneers came off. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He had to, like, stick it back on. <laughs> and all his mojo was instantly gone. Oh, no. It was amazing. Did he, he like, bite Stop! into it? Did he bite into something? I don't know. He bit into something. It was, it was right. It was uh, during a, uh, it was it was a Christmas super group we did called Band of, Band of Merrymakers. So, but it was because he had been flossing. flossing. One of those things, yes. Yeah. So, Loosened so flossed, yes. Yeah, so continue. So Sorry. we're pro floss. Sorry, we were. Yeah. Football or baseball? Football. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Cardio or weights? Well, you got a couple of BFT. Both. Uh, if I had to do only one, it would be weights. Reality or true crime? True crime. Threads or X. These are hmm. platforms of social media. I would, oh, I know. Okay, but, 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 aware. but see, I don't X. I don't say X. I, I refuse. Still Twitter. I would say. I would say. Uh, I like Threads. Really? Yeah. Are I you do active like Threads. On Threads. I'm. Um, I, I'm not active on either. But in, but Elon just bugs me. You know. <laughs> I like. I respect his mind and his yeah. success. Sure. But his his uh, public agree. persona, what he does, and X. Suddenly, I'm, we're gonna. Yeah. It's Twitter. Um. Yeah. So I'll go with Threads. All right. 
Prada or Gucci? Gucci. My, ah, my wife. I thought he was going to be Italian. Wife, my wife loves, loves uh, Gucci. I buy a lot of Gucci. <laughs> I still have some of my favorite boots or these Prada boots I've had. And with the, and the great thing when I don't buy. Oh, they're both Italian, by the way. I just said yeah. you love Italian. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're both no, they're, Italian. They're Prada, Gucci, <laughs> all of them. Italian. You know, I, I, I like, I rarely buy it for myself, but every time I have, I wear it forever. And if and if you keep it, if it goes out of style, keep it. It will come back. Yeah. It will come back. Yeah, I actually have some Prada shoes that I bought in 1998 when I was filming a movie there. Mm-hmm. And they they were like clear. You would love these, Amanda. They're sure like I would. clear pink your tiny heels, nugget wedges, feet. like acrylic shoes. And of course, for a while there, they were not in. Oh, but, but they are now. I do have a pair of yellow platform shoes that are really interesting. I wanted to show you and see how I can wear them. They're like bubble shoes. It's That's weird. Time. You said you were married in Florence. Yeah. Where were you married in Florence? Uh, at the um, Villa Cora, which is just on the other side of the Bobbly Gardens. I know it. Well, I went to a, a, a beautiful wedding. Uh, at the Four Seasons there, oh, okay. that, that big courtyard there. Yeah. Um, but I know where you were married. Um, have you been to the outlet mall outside of Florence? No. I'm sorry, what? No. There now you're a, speaking my language. There is a designer outlet con- enclave of Montclair, Gucci, Hermes, everything. When we go to Lake Como with him, it's then we nuts. date Chris to over Florence. To Florence. Yeah. My wife was just going, Erica was just going crazy and I ended up getting uh, stuff too. So. I love it. So yeah, that's there you go. Chance. That's See? dangerous. You that's so bargain dangerous. Bargain in Italy. entertaining, but we, you learn something as one well. One more thing. We're going to judge you with your phone. Um, oh, yeah. you got your phone. Can you, can you just tell us on your email app mm. what the little red dot says? God, you guys are going to be... Yeah, I, I doubt it. Well, actually, you've got two opposites. Actually, I cleaned up recently. Oh. So I, I did... Okay. Let's see what All it right. is. What's it's, it up? It's, okay, it's really, really low. It's three thousand six hundred and ninety-two. Now he's Team Amanda. Now almost. It was at thirty thousand. Okay, well, point. let's. What's yours at right now, Mom? Thirty-one thousand five hundred forty-six. Yeah, yeah, and that's after she cleaned it up. So. I've had mine's my, at one seventy seven, and I'm n- like right now. I'm thinking I have to leave this interview to go answer How many how many voicemails do you have? That's my new favorite. One. One. Only because I and I have six hundred and seventy four <laughs> um, texts. I have six hundred and seventy four. Oh, I have. 14, so you don't answer, texts. and that's making me nervous. I do, but but a lot of times someone answers me, and I and and so I I know what their answer is. It's like it's like this person said, "Coolio, thanks." I know then what they said. It. I don't need then to open, open it. it. I and then that's how it about emails. It doesn't. It doesn't bother it. me. You guys, oh. it. I think I've. I've, I've some of Was my it friendships. <laughs> some, oh, some of my friendships have been affected by how many uh, unanswered emails. But yeah. I've had my Gmail since 2008. Okay. And I've got like 50 gigs that I pay for with Google because mm-hmm. there's so many songs I have that get oh, emailed yeah. back and forth yeah. I, and. All the time, I was like, I know, I, I know, I wrote that song, and I'll I'll check yeah. back from 2010. So you know, I, don't I have like way getting... too many email addresses. So to be honest, that 177 is just what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. The ones that See? I want directed. See, to I just me. that's a really good red, question. Does that say, <laughs> it's that that question is the modern equivalent of looking in someone's car. How messy or <laughs> yeah. clean is it? Yeah. Because that is a great. Let me open if, up your pantry. Or if something. someone's yeah. car is just destroyed inside. You know what they're like. You know what their brain's yeah, like. You know what they're like. <laughs> but they're a creative person. We we we, we shan't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we make or break friendships yeah. around here. Well, let's get your guitar. I want to hear you play glycerine. Yes. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, uh, glycerine. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Hey guys, so here we are from Better Than Ezra. We have yes. Kevin Griffin about to sing some songs for us. So yay! Okay, take it away. Let's do it. <laughs> this is uh from 1995. <laughs> And you guys can sing along if you want to. <laughs> Looking around the house, watching the sun through his shadows on the floor, searching the signs of life, but there's nobody home. Oh! Now maybe I'm just too sure. Or maybe I'm just too frightened by the sound of it. Pieces of note fall down, but the letter said, Uh huh. It was good living with you. Uh huh. It was good. Uh huh. It was good. 
good living with you. Oh, it was good. Oh, oh, oh. good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, good. That's right, Mama. Sitting around the house. Watching the sun, three shadows on the floor Searching the signs of life, there's nobody home Now most people know this verse Now maybe I'll call or write you a letter Now maybe we'll see on the 4th of July Cause I'm not too sure and I'm not too proud Well, I'm not too sure And I'm not too proud to say Uh-huh It was good living with you Uh-huh It was good Uh-uh-uh-uh-uh uh It was good living with you Uh-huh It was good Uh-uh-uh-uh oh. This is when you kind of do, do you, you guys do, there we go, clapping. Hey, come on, uh, come on, uh. One, two, three. Ah, uh -huh. it was good living with you. Ah, uh -huh. it was good. Ah, uh ah, -huh. Glycerine <laughs> Glycerine Glycerine Breathe in Breathe, Breathe out <laughs> Thank you! I love, it. I love that your guitar is like a Takis color Awesome. Thank you. Wait, awesome, what color? Awesome. It looks like Takis, like crushed what? Takis. I don't know. Oh, crushed Takis. Like Takis, right? No, Isn't totally, this a yeah. guitar? It's With a the, Gibson Dove. What is it, a Dove? Oh, it's, it's a Dove. dove. Oh. It looks kind of like a hummingbird, but this is a Dove. It is. This is pretty pretty. This was pretty. a birthday present really pretty. from a lady. Very nice uh, oh, you're throwing oh, picks out. I'm throwing picks. I'm tossing Throw picks out. One. That's what I do. Look, it actually says, the greatest song. Oh, oh, good promotional piece. I like it. Uh, what else you got for us? Why oh, wait, don't we real do, quick, the yes. lyrics on that one. What does it mean? Can you, you tell us? The Well, the wah-ah was supposed to be lyrics. Yeah, that was just a space holder? Yeah, I, I wrote the song, and I played it at Soundcheck for the band, and we were playing this place in Jackson, Mississippi, called W.C. Don's, which was this double-wide trailer that was a venue, and it was run by trustees of a... Mendel Institution in downtown Jackson was a very strange place, like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. But we played the song with the unfinished lyrics, with the wah-ah, and I kept it because that's all anybody remembered. But the song's just about looking back on a relationship and instead of being bitter about what ended it, thinking about all the things that were great. So like it's that. a wah -ah. That's the way I always took it. it. Was so good. I'm glad to know. I was, it was good living with you. I was kind of singing it with the same intent, yeah, I guess. that's what I've always felt. Nice. Yes. Right. So why don't we? Um, I could do another. I could do another. Why don't we do Collide? Okay. This is a song. I um, I had this title that I knew was a money title. This was 2007, um, and it wasn't a title that, of any song at that time. And I played it for Howie Day, who was 18 at the time. He had come down from Bangor, Maine, to my studio, and I played the song for him. He was like, "Oh my God, we have to finish that. That's going to be my Dave Matthews." crash so uh we did it all right and yes this was in pride and prejudice imagine swelling strings the dawn is breaking a light shining through your belly waking and I'm tangled up in you 
Yeah. Come on, guys. I'm quiet, you know. Or I follow, you'll go. I'm worried, I won't see your face. Light up again, even the best fall down sometimes. Even the wrong words seem to rhyme. And none of the doubt that fills your mind, you somehow find you and I collide. Don't stop here. Behind. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nashville Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> Coming through the door any minute. You did pay for the Symphony Orchestra to come. I did, I did. They're late, they're late. Cause even the best fall down sometimes. And even the stars refuse to shine. And none of the doubt that fills your mind You somehow find You and I collide Everybody! You somehow find You and I collide Woo! Woo! Thank you! Awesome. Thank you! Awesome! Awesome! awesome. <laughs> Thank you in so this, much. In this tiny room. You're in this tiny playing room. Playing to the back. I love it. We got to do a little bit of Juicy for you. Oh, okay, yes, just do a little do. bit of Juicy for me. I got somebody's day. You're like a soup opera cover. You're sweet. Somebody's pain. Juicy. Kiss of Juicy. I love it. Just a little bit. So thank you. I appreciate oh, that. It sounded brilliant. So With, thank you, you guys for having me. This was so, so fun. So yeah. Thank you for being here. I love that you're down the road. We're going to come to Pilgr Pilgrimage. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I'm, we're going to Lake Como. We have a lot of plans. So. Lake Como, Pilgrimage. We need to go to Fisher Center sometime. Yeah, Fisher Center for sure. We, we've got some We've got some plans. we got some things we got to schedule. But. Do you guys have a theme song? Uh, we do, but it doesn't have lyrics. Woman that bends. Do we need another one? <laughs> Feel free. We can always update it. Woman that bends. That's what I'm talking about. Woman, woman, woman. Woman, woman, woman. Woman that bends. Say what? <laughs> woman that bends. The bends. All night long, all day. Woman that bends. Say what? Woohoo, mama, the dick, the bends, the bends. Women at what? Woman at binge. Yes. That's so good. That was hilarious. I love it. I love it. Oh, you it, got that. It was my husband that did it, so you can totally replace it. <laughs> well, when you're feeling funky and fly and fresh, you throw in the cage. We'll throw that in. Women the binge. Sure. So Absolutely. We yeah. Just, yeah. We, we were talking over the top of it. We just wrote it, though. Do you, yes. So we but all own it. Really well done. Yeah, you don't have to clear that shit. 
Really well done. Really? No, you don't have to clear it. <laughs> we all wrote it. We all see it. We're all in the room. What, We're all in the room. Five minutes, what?